Hello everyone, welcome to week two of Summer Learning at your Topeka Library. My name is Scott and today we're going to talk about some of the myths, stories, and legends that come to us from the original peoples of the Americas. That is, today's United States, and this includes our neighbors Canada and Mexico, as well as everything you can see in this map. Now long before Europeans came and took over the lands of what we now call North America and South America, hundreds of different groups of peoples, existing as their own nations or countries, lived here. Now all of them were unique with their own languages and customs, clothing and ideas. Today, there are more than 500 different American Indian nations in our own country. This is a good thing to know and remember, that many different unique peoples lived here before the arrival of the Europeans. Now, one thing these peoples, and really all people, have in common is that they have created stories about the world and their place in it. We call these stories myths, and people have used myths throughout time to explain and make sense of their existence where they came from, where plants and animals came from, how the weather works, and more. Now it is important for us to remember though, myths and stories can be very important to those who made them. Remember that the people who were here before Columbus lost much as Europeans came and took over the land. Their identity, language, culture, clothing, and stories were and continue to be important. Myths and stories connect modern descendants of original peoples here to their past identity. Myths and stories is one of the ways of people saying, this is who we are. So let's remember to be respectful and respect other people's ideas, beliefs, and cultures. Now, something that appeared a lot in these myths and stories was corn. Corn, beans, and squash were some of the most important foods in much of the Americas. Corn is sometimes called maize, and people started growing it, now we think, in Mexico over 9,000 years ago. Now, corn didn't always look like it does today. It used to look like this. It was a green native grass called teosinte. Now, you really can't eat teosinte. It wouldn't taste good. The kernels are hard and yucky, and each tiny seed had its own husk, unlike today's corn, which has just one big husk. Now, people stuck with the plant anyways, and there were thousands of years of planting and selecting the biggest and strongest plants, and planting seeds from those, Humans changed that corn, or teosinte, into something that we see today. One of the stories that many people share, with their own versions of course, is that of the three sisters. They described corn, beans, and squash as three beautiful sisters, all very different looking and with different personalities, but who would always stuck together, as sisters should. And because they stuck together, they lived happily and healthy. Now you see, beans like to climb. That's how they grow. So the corn stalk provides a great way to do this. Beans return the favor by providing nutrients to the soil. Squash, with its big leaves covering the ground, provides shade for the roots and keeps the weeds away. Can you see how a story like this is a good way to show and remember the importance of these foods, as well as growing them together? Now a character that appears in many stories is that of the corn mother. In one version, according to the Penobscot Indians, the Corn Mother was also the first mother of the people. Their creation myth says that after people began to fill the earth, they became too good at hunting and ended up killing too many animals. This upset the Corn Mother, for her children had no more food to eat. To save her children, the Corn Mother sacrificed herself. Her family buried her in the ground, and when they returned to that place in seven months, they found that corn plants had grown. The silky fibers of the plants reminded them of their mother's long hair. She had become the food that would keep her children alive and happy. Now what's the meaning of this story? If your mother works hard and does something good for you, you appreciate and remember it, right? This story teaches those who hear it to appreciate and be thankful for the life that corn gives. All right, guys, now for the fun part. Today, we are going to be making ourselves our very own corn cob. Now in your bag, you should have four pipe cleaners, and I don't know if you're gonna have the same colors as I do, and that's okay, because every corn cob looks a bit different. So you have these four pipe cleaners. I want you to try to get them straight with each other. Like so. And from here, I want you to grab the middle.
and twist the whole thing against itself. Just like that. Now I want to unfold it. All right, now for the beads. Should have got a whole bunch of those in your baggie. I want you to do, and you can do this in any order you like, start feeding the beads on each pipe cleaner. This is where our counting comes in though. It works best if they're more or less even each arm. And I think we're going for about 10 per arm here. How many do I have right there? Five, six, seven. All right, and once you get all those beads put on there, you get something that looks kind of nifty like that. And what we want to do, and that's why we twisted the center at the very beginning, is start to bring up all our pieces. It's starting to look like corn, doesn't it? All right. Grab it with one hand, hold it with the other, give it a good squeeze so it all kind of bunches together there. What does that look like? Pretty nifty. All right, we do one more twist. Hold it in your hand, grab all those pipe cleaners, and give it a couple twists. What we end up with is a corn cob. Pretty nifty, eh?